Hey there YouTube, this is Deborah from GFY Farms. Uh, thank you for joining us again. This morning I'm going to make my cinnamon rolls. Uh, it's a treat that I like making on the weekends. Many times I will make this um, at night, make the dough at night, put it in my bread machine uh, overnight on the delay timer, but today I'm making it in the morning. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is 3 fourths cup warm milk. Now, um, if you're doing this in the delay timer, you can just put the milk in cold because it's going to stay separate from the yeast for, you know, 8, 12 hours until it starts. But for now, because I'm going to make this immediately, I'm going to stick this in the microwave for about 20 seconds. While that's warming up, I'm going to go ahead and get the pan out of my recipe. I'm also going to make sure that the little knobby's in there correctly. Now my bread machine calls for ingredients to go in uh, wet first, so I'm waiting for this milk. And really what you want is for the milk just to be lukewarm, you don't want it to be hot. So I'm going to pour in my 3 fourths cup milk. This recipe calls for eggs. You want them to be room temperature also again for the same reason. Um, but what we are going to do is one whole egg and one egg yolk. Now I'm going to move this sugar out of the way. To show you how I do this after I put the milk away. So I'm going to try to leave the extra whites in this container by just slowly opening it up. And this doesn't have to be exact. Um, we're not making meringue or anything, so it's not doesn't matter if some of it mixes up. So there's my two eggs. I'm going to take this white and I'm going to use it for breakfast or something. I'm going to make sure it distributes easy, easily. I want to give it a quick little stir before adding it. So the next thing we're going to use is a fourth a cup of butter. I like using unsalted butter, but you can use either. But because, again, we want it to be able to mix in evenly, I'm going to melt this butter in the microwave real quick. So now I have the melted butter, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in there also. And then to that, I'm going to add one fourth cup sugar. As always, I'm not too worried about it being exact. There's a fourth cup sugar. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon salt. If you end up using salted butter, you might want to cut this back to about three-fourths of a teaspoon. Then we're going to add our flour. So I sometimes sift the flour for this recipe, but I don't, we're not looking for like a bread-like consistency with light and airy as much. So today I'm going to be lazy. Oops. And I'm just going to scoop lightly and then use a knife to take off the excess. So that second cup. And that's the third cup. Now if you guys watched my previous recipe with the bread, um, when I'm using the delay timer I make a little well in the flour so that the yeast doesn't mix with the other ingredients until I'm ready for it to. Saying we're going to put this in immediately, I am skipping that step and going straight to putting in my yeast. And I am going to put two and a fourth teaspoon, which is basically an envelope. If you're getting uh, yeast in an envelope, I get these big containers and uh, I'm using instant yeast. As you notice, I'm also not very good at measuring that either because I did not get a fourth a teaspoon out. I just eyeballed it. So that's it. In here we have three-fourths of a cup warm milk, a fourth a cup butter melted. Um, we got the fourth of a cup of sugar, a teaspoon salt, the uh, one egg and one egg yolk, the bread flour, which is three cups, and a teaspoon salt. So I'm going to put this in the bread machine. Make sure it snaps in, and then set it to the dough setting. Okay, I'm going to set it to the dough setting and hit start, and in this one it's going to immediately start. 
Mixing the ingredients. The dough setting is about an hour and a half. So I'll just close the lid and I'll be back with you later. So this is a little peek in as the dough is rising. This is about an hour and 10 minutes in. It has about a 20 more minute to rise. So a recommendation before you start making anything is to make sure you have enough of everything you need. Um, I started trying to make the next part of this recipe and found out that we only had about a fourth a cup of brown sugar. So I had to ride up to the neighbor's house and borrow some brown sugar. So we're back now with uh, the first rise of the cinnamon rolls. So I did this in the bread machine, but you could also do this with traditional methods. So you can actually mix this in a KitchenAid or something similar. You would want to uh, knead the dough really well for about seven to 10 minutes until it's pliable and soft because you want this type of consistency to it. It'll be smaller, of course and then uh, cover it and put it in a warm location for about an hour until it doubles in size. And then you'd be right here with the same method that I'm doing right now. So I've taken the dough out. I'm gonna grab a little bit of flour. Because you wanna flour the surface that you're working on. Because we're gonna roll this out into a rectangle. You don't want to knead it very much or anything. I tend to just pull it a little bit first and then you can take the rolling pin and roll it out. And you're trying to get a pretty good rectangle. I would say we'd want 15 by nine. You want to try to get it as even as possible. Because the idea here is we're going to make this into a nice big rectangle and then we're going to spread this, the, uh, the butter and the cinnamon and brown sugar on it and then we're going to roll it. And just like uh, pizza dough and stuff, you have to kind of work it because it wants to go back into the position it was in. Okay, that's about right. So here I have about a fourth a cup of melted butter. And you can do softened butter or melted. I usually just do melted because it's a lot easier to just put it on here. And you can either use a brush or your clean fingers and just make sure you get butter all over this rectangle. And then here I have about a cup of brown sugar. Thank you to the neighbor. And we're just going to put that brown sugar all over. It's a little bit Oops, a little bit crunchy here. It will melt into the uh, into the butter, but I'm getting those big chunks loosened up. Kind of want to get some around everywhere, even on the edges, because the edge, this short edge, is going to end up being uh, the top of the first cinnamon roll. <laughs> And you'll see that in a minute. Same thing with this edge. You want to kind of get it all on in there because you don't want to have two cinnamon rolls that don't have much. The long edge isn't as important. I mean, you want some there, but we're going to be rolling it this way. So then I have cinnamon. The amount of cinnamon that you're going to use is kind of a personal choice. I'm just going to sit here and put some around it. I like about a teaspoon and a half. So that was a half a teaspoon. And that was another half, and then this would make a teaspoon and a half. Again, trying to make sure I get some on the outside edges, because that will be the top or bottom of one. Oops. And if you get a little too much in one place, just spread it out. It's all gonna roll up in the end anyway. The next step will be the second rise after we roll it up. I'm gonna take the far end, the long end, and just start rolling. And sometimes I like pulling it a little bit, kind of get that stuff in there. 
make sure it doesn't fall out and just keep rolling. And keep rolling until you have a log. You want it to be about even size. So once you have this, you're gonna take a very sharp knife. Some people actually use dental floss. You can stick dental floss in here and just tie it off. I don't have any, not gonna do that. And how I get 12 is I usually start right in the middle and try to saw, don't try to press because otherwise you're gonna compress the, the roll. And then that gives me half and half. And then I do this one in half again. And then each of these I try to get into kind of three equal parts. So I tend to be bad about this and sometimes end up with a very thick one and a very thin one. But there's your cinnamon roll. And you're gonna place those in your pan. If it starts unrolling, just stretch it out. So I'm gonna continue to do this for this one. I sometimes, when it looks like it's falling apart, I pinch the rolling edge. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other half of a log. Now this is what I was talking about that comes it gets a little weird because this end is thinner. So I'm just gonna kind of shape it so it's the same size throughout. So there we go. Once we have all of the cinnamon rolls in here, kind of equal spaced apart, um, we're gonna set them to rise again. Never know how, which way to put these in here so they all fit. <laughs> there we go. I'll leave it like that. So my oven has a bread proof setting. Um, keeps the temperature about 100, I think. Never actually read on what it is. The bread proof setting is nice because it's a little cool in our house. What I'm gonna do is take a towel and cover it. And you're gonna put it in a warm location. Doesn't have to be extremely warm, but if your house is kind of cold, you might wanna put it uh, either in the microwave or in the oven, um, or if you have a bread proof setting, even better. So I'm gonna put this in the oven now. And I'm gonna set the timer for about 30 minutes. And we're gonna go ahead and wait for that to rise, uh, clean up this mess, and then we'll be ready to bake it. So this has been in the oven under the proof mode for about 35 minutes. I got busy doing something else. So you see they've all risen. I am going to set the oven now. Bake, nope, bake at 350 and start. I'm gonna let it preheat for a little bit. And then I'm gonna put these in the oven. I put them in the oven for about 25 minutes. Um, I usually check them about 20 minutes and um, I don't know why. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it takes less. While the oven is preheating, I'm getting out some of the ingredients for the topping I'm gonna put over it. Uh, the first thing is four ounces of cream cheese and you kinda want it to get more to room temperature. We're gonna use powdered sugar. It's gonna be about one and a half cups of powdered sugar. So we're also gonna use about a quarter cup butter and some vanilla salt, which I already have out. So I'm gonna leave these ingredients out so that we can make the topping when the rolls are about to get out of the oven. Now that the oven's preheated, we're gonna go ahead and put these in. And we're gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. But remember, I put the timer on for 20 minutes so I can check them. Usually it takes about 25 for the them to be ready. So while the cinnamon rolls are in the oven, I'm gonna make the cream cheese uh, frosting that I put on top of them. Sometimes when I'm lazy, I don't do that. 
with cream cheese frosting, I just mix uh, powdered sugar with a little bit of water and just do a glaze. Um, that's a lot easier. I don't have to get out the mixer, but today I'm gonna make the cream cheese. So to start with, I have a half, well, four ounces of cream cheese. That's a half of the normal size um, cream cheese that you buy at the store. And I have a fourth a cup of butter. I have them both softened. I'm gonna put them in here. Then to that, I'm gonna add one cup of powdered sugar. Now I'm gonna start this on a low setting so it doesn't get the powdered sugar everywhere. And even then some of it comes knocking out. I'm also going to add an, about a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla. And you're gonna see it's gonna come out kind of like a thick frosting that we're in the, will melt when we put it over the, over the cinnamon rolls. So there you have it, a little bit of cream cheese frosting to put on those cinnamon rolls. Here are our cinnamon rolls, and I am just going to take, while they're nice and hot, the frosting, and it'll start melting on top of here. If you use the powdered sugar and water glaze, it'll actually pour on a little easier than the cream cheese. The cream cheese is thicker, and you have to wait for it to melt, but it is so good. And there you go. There are homemade cinnamon rolls. Thank you for following along. I'm gonna put a link to the recipe in the description. Shh. Don't tell the family I'm licking the spoon or the beater. I really don't need this. It's kind of one of the reasons we're all overweight. Oh well. <laughs>